there, crafty friends. It's Diane, the Creative Inkster. Today is Monday, January 9th, 2023, and we are going to do a fun girl card. It is a celebration. These wonderful catalogs have hit the streets. I really hope you have yours. If you don't have a demonstrator and would like a copy of the mini catalog, get in touch with me. Leave a message down below, and uh, we will get that sorted out for anyone in Canada. This catalog is good now till May the 1st, and there's all kinds of wonderful goodies in here, stamp sets, bundles, embellishments, and more. But the one we're going to focus on tonight is our celebration brochure. This is another goodie you want to get in on right now. It's good till the end of February. And what it tells you is every $60 you spend, you get something for free. And if you spend 120 you have a choice of two level ones or one level two. Let me show you what I mean. So for example, this pack of paper, it's 48 sheets of 12 by 12 uh, paper. And with a minimum $120 purchase, it can be yours for free. Or if you spend 120 and instead you want to get a stamp set and paper, there's this gorgeous paper, favored flowers which I'm using tonight and a bunch of stamp sets. Sending support is one that I've used a lot and has some really nice greetings for thinking of you, supporting you, uh, helping you through things, that kind of greeting which you may not always have in a stamp set when you're looking for one. Um, there's also paper here, the Dainty Flowers, that actually coordinates with one of the bundles in that catalog I just showed you. So lots of different ways to get fun things. You've seen me use the Adorable Owls a number of times, and thanks a bunch. I've been using that. It's really kind of cute. I really didn't know if I'd love it, but I have been enjoying it. So the one I want to highlight tonight is this favored flowers paper on page 11 gorgeous gorgeous patterns of flowers and it has a fragrant flowers bundle that coordinates with it as well i don't have that one yet so that's going to go on my wish list all right let's take a look at what we're doing we're going to make a double pocket fold card here is the one that i've made up using that pretty paper and I found that when I did this one, I sealed it a little bit too close in on this so they don't slide in and out. So this is my sample, but we're going to try to do a better job on the live tonight. And then there's a second pocket for information in the back here. So you've got two pockets that you can add in. So you could put a gift card in here. You could put uh, just two messages on paper, whatever you want to do, but this is what we're doing is we're creating a double pocket out of this one piece of paper. Let's get started with what we need. If you're watching, please let me know you're watching. Leave a comment, we'll connect. And if you're watching the replay, similarly, let me know you're here. When you're ready to place your order, this is my host code for January, and I'd be grateful if you used it. In fact, I'll send you a little gift in the mail if you use this and place an online order in my store. So my store is thecreativeinkster.stampitup.net. And hi, Brenda, and that is my host code for now. You can always message me and ask for the current host code. Right, so to make this card, we're going to need our paper trimmer, and we're going to need a piece of 12 by 12. So I'm going to make this double pocket fold card twice, because I want to do it once with this paper, and then I'm going to use the um, newer stuff, so you can see it both both times. So the first thing you need to do with your eight, uh, 12 by 12 paper is cut it down to 8.5 by 11. So we're cutting 3.5 inches off. Then I'm going to turn it around and cut an inch off. And I would recommend that you go with a non-directional paper. If you have something that's directional, uh, meaning it has to go up this way or over this way, you may find the results different because it is. Um, we're going to be cutting and folding and such. All right, so this may sound familiar, 8.5 by 11, because that's the size of a regular sheet of cardstock. And what we're going to do, we're all familiar with having a layer, uh, or the card rather, being four and a quarter by five and a half. So those are the measurements we're going to use for our scoring. So with the eight and a half inch side across the top of your trimmer, 
you're going to line the left side up at four and a quarter and then you're going to score all the way down so you've got a score line four and a quarter then you're going to turn it this way and you're going to score it's now 11 inches across the top and you're going to score at five and a half it's like we're trying to find the center of the card all right so that's what we have here i know it's not super easy to see it may very well be easier to see from the darker side from the dark side so um, this is scored at four and a quarter this is scored at five and a half so you've got four quadrants here all right let's keep um, our eyes on this top right quadrant and we are going to cut in on this piece here along this score line so it's five and a half down and four and a quarter in is that even because it doesn't look even yeah it's four and a quarter let me just double check my measurements before we get too carried away here oh yeah it is just my eyes okay so we are going to go down five and a half and we're going to cut in at four and a quarter so what i did was I put my 11 inch side horizontal with the five and a half score line right in the middle of my track and then I pulled my cutting blade up to the top and along the edge of my trimmer I have numbers here and I have an arrow or a notch and so I'm going to line this up at four and a quarter and I'm going to slice forward or, or towards the top and so then that gives me a cut in between you could also use your scissors. I'm just using my uh, paper trimmer because it's easy. All right. All righty. That's what we need to do there. Uh, we are going to fold uh, along the score lines. And you need a bone folder. So we're just going to fold the other score lines so they have some weight to them. This makes it easier. <laughs> I printed off my instructions, but a piece didn't show up too well. Okay. All right. So, so far, this is what we've got. Okay. We've got a quadrant, eight and a half by 11. We have three connected uh, rectangles over here and then this little opening here. We're going to cut a little chunk off of the top left. It doesn't matter. You can do it with scissors. This is just to take some of the excess bulk out of it. So, here we are. That's the top left quadrant. I'm going to turn it and I'm just going to cut off an angle just we don't need it and it's just to uh, take a little bulk out of the card alrighty and then we are going to fold the bottom right quadrant below the cut line we're going to fold a corner up and this is you know as far as you want it to go if you make it much further it uh, uh, higher up then you're going to have a different angle than if you go just a short amount looks like i kind of did this pretty evenly okay so you got to experiment with this when you do the quadrant you want to have uh, the fold rather you want it to be flush so you want where this is cut open you want that to be uh, parallel with this line here so the best way to do that is to line this up on some grid paper and actually the paper I have actually has lines on it how helpful is that so we're going to have it this side be parallel with the score line and the top parallel with the cut mark okay so we're going to do that little fold up and I'm going to use my bone folder and then I'm going to fold the whole half over to the left. All right, so let me go up. Oops, wait a second. Is that right? Wait a second. What did we do here? Uh oh, I don't want to deconstruct. But I'm just having a moment because, like I said, I printed my instructions off, but some of my glue is missing. So let's see. I folded that over. Um, fold it over to the left. 
like this. Okay, that makes sense. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, you're going to fold that up like that, and you're going to fold this over to the left. And then the top quadrant above the cut is going to fold behind, and you're going to fold the top piece up. Yes. And then this piece, wait a second. Oh no, what happened? Okay. Hold on a minute. Let me just get my bearings here. Don't you just love it when a plan doesn't come together? I'm missing a fold. Okay, the bottom right quadrant, I'm going to fold the corner up and I'm going to fold that half over to the left. And I'm going to fold the top under and to the left. Fold the top left corner Oh no, I'm sorry, something's not working. Okay, bear with me. Thank you. Hi, Vicki. <laughs> I'm going to deconstruct my last one, and I'm going to show you what I did. That's why we're doing it twice, so that I can figure it out. All right, let's see what we did here. This is why anybody can be a demonstrator, because anybody can mess this up right <laughs> folding over folding over folding down folding up wait a second i'm gonna have to get oh my goodness what's happened well we've got a little confused ladies so i know you're gonna hang with me all right so we folded this piece up. We folded our tent. Okay. <laughs> we deconstructed. It's way more fun that way. All right. Here we go. Here's our piece. They're all going like, you think we're going to be able to follow you after that? Craziness. Okay. Here we go. We've cut our little snip off this part. We've got our cut there. We've got it folded up. We're going to fold this over. I'm going to fold this back. Ah, and then we're going to fold this down. That's why we cut the back out. Okay. I think we're back in business now. All right. Here's our piece. Eight and a half high 11. Scored at four and a quarter and five and a half. We cut a little bit off the edge. We're going to do whatever angle we want, so long as the line here is parallel to this one and the line here is parallel to that one. All right, we're going to fold this back. Well, we're going to fold this forward and we'll take the top one. We're going to fold it around and then we're going to fold this down the top left. Now that we've got a long skinny one here, we're going to fold this down so that the open end here lines up with the right side. I laughed at this person whose video I watched and I saw her struggling and now I know why you struggle. Okay. All right, we fold that piece over. And then you fold the bottom up. And like magic, when you turn it over, you have two pockets. Pretty cool, huh? We're going to do this again, just so we're clear. All right, that's why we did it in the paper I didn't care as much about. All right, back to the beginning. So we do this right. We're using non-directional paper, basically. We're going to cut it down to eight and a half by 11. So we're cutting three and a half inches off and one inch off the other end. And then we've got a piece that's eight and a half by 11. We're going to score it at four and a quarter. So we're scoring it in half at four and a quarter. And then we're going to turn it 90 degrees and we're going to score this side in half at five and a half. So we're basically scoring it in half both directions. 
Okay, there we go. We're going to trim off, if you can imagine, we've got a line here and a line here. We're going to trim a little bit off the top. That just takes some of the bulk out of it. So you want to make it a nice piece because you want to reuse this paper, right? This time I think I'm going to go a little deeper and cut a little bit bigger piece off that I can reuse. Here we are, eight and a half by 11. And where this score line is here, we're gonna cut through. So we line this up at five and a half. We have that funky cut down at the bottom here. Gonna line the trimmer up at four and a quarter. You can see the line and cut. There we go. And uh, we may need this some more. All right, so that's what our piece looks like. Okay, we are going to take our corner here and it doesn't matter where you want to fold it up. You just want to make sure that this line is parallel to your score line and the top piece is parallel to your cut line. Depending on how dark a pattern is that you're working with, that can be a little bit precarious. Do your best. That's all that matters. So you give it a try and do your best. Okay, so we have a snipped edge here. We've got a folded edge here. Now we're going to fold this over to the left. Look at how pretty that paper is. Oh, I should probably mention too, it helps when your two sides of your pattern paper complement one another. You lift it up in your hand and you're going to fold this rectangle over. You should have something that looks like this. Then you're going to take the top corner here. We've cut this piece off to take some bulk out of it. And you're going to fold it all the way over to line up the top edge with your fold edge. Here we go. We're going in. And then if you don't have a bone folder, this is one of the things I saw another demonstrator do, and I thought it was brilliant. If you don't have a bone folder handy, use the block because it gives you a nice heavy edge that you can use to crease that. All right, and so then you're going to fold this up. It's like origami, right? And here we go. We have one pocket, two pocket, but we do need to seal it up a little bit. This is a bit directional, but not too bad. So we want to seal it up uh, a little. Now where I went wrong on my first one was I sealed it too tight so my piece didn't fit nicely inside. So we're going to seal here and we're going to seal this left side on the back. But we are going to use liquid glue because we can put a little bead of it versus uh, a tape runner because that had a little more than a quarter of an inch and it just took up too much space. I suppose I could have made my little slide in pieces thinner, but I'd already cut them, so that kind of didn't work for me. Okay, so I'm just using this idea of using the block. It actually gives you a good amount of coverage that way. And then this piece is now still open a little bit. So we want to put a little glue here and we want to put a little glue at the bottom as well. So liquid glue is your friend on this project. Thanks for hanging with me while we figure out the measurements that were a little funky and the pattern paper. So we've sealed the bottom and we've sealed this size side as well. Okay, and we're going to let that dry so that when we slide our paper in, all will be well with the world. Okay, now we need some paper. We need a piece of white that is three and an eighth by four and three eighths. So, three and an eighth. 
by 4 and 3 eighths. There's piece number one. We're going to layer them. And we also need a piece that is um, 3 and 5 eighths by 4 and 7 eighths. So four and, I know they're kind of funky measurements. 4 and 7 eighths by 3 and 5 eighths. So we have two pieces that are going to slide into our aptly named double pocket card but we're going to layer them onto some coordinating cardstock and I grabbed old olive here I think it needs to be a different color so luckily for all of us I have some mossy meadow kind of handy here mossy meadow is what I want so to layer these up by an eighth an inch of an inch, we're going to go three and a quarter by four and a half. So three and a quarter. I'm going to have this on my blog so the actual measurements will be there for you. Three and a quarter by four and a half. And that just gives you a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. It's cut an eighth of an inch smaller. And then our other piece of white, we're going to layer on five by three and three quarters. So we will go five by three and three quarters. Who's going to do this card? Are you going to do this card after watching me play around with it? I hope so. <laughs> you got to do something a couple of times before it comes together really, really nicely. So... I will go over those measurements again. Okay, so while our card base is drying, we're going to do a little bit of stamping. So I thought that the dragonflies looked kind of nice on here. And I'm never quite sure which one I like best, but this one I'm going to use has the lines going um, more open, I'd say. More airy, more open. Let's get a block. And we're going to grab some, oh, look at that, old olive, because that's what we have handy. That's okay. It's the same shade. It's just a different depth of color. And we're going to, as I did on my sample one, just put a couple of these beautiful dragonflies on the paper get something to put underneath that because I don't want to mess up my paper here. Now what you can do is put a greeting or a writing on here afterwards and then this one's a little smaller our other piece of white so I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller stamping covering a little bit less area. So I'm going to put two. There we go. And we're doing some stamping off that's totally fine. Okay now it's time to layer these guys up. So take the two that are closest in size and we'll glue those together. And these are going to just slide in. Now you can just slide them in the pocket or you can create a little bit of a ribbon and a little half circle with it. That's what I did on my sample. I think that's what we'll do again here. And that just kind of dresses it up a little bit. But like I said, I think using the liquid glue to seal the edges instead of um, adhesive on a tape runner, which is wider, may be the better bet. All right, so we need a couple of tabs that we're going to put at the top here. So these ones I made with a small uh, circle from the layering circles dies. It's about, I think they're about a, an inch little over an inch, inch and an eighth, I think. And literally, I can just fold them in half. They're easy enough to work with. Fold them in half. You can try to put them on your, like, uh, scoring tool and do that, but I'm just folding them in half. Life is easy. Let's keep it simple. If you want to make it easier to fold them over without it creasing, you can use your bolt and folder and break down the fibers a little bit. All right. There we go. Tab one, tab two. 
and I did use some tape runner on this because I, want, I didn't want to wait for the liquid glue to dry because I'm going to punch a hole in this, right? So we don't want to do that. Now I found a way to line these up and that is where the grid paper has the little quarter inch notches you can basically see where the center is and mostly eyeball it from there. Now you can also grab a ruler and from the edge of the half circle to the outside here is one inch exactly and one and an eighth so I know I need to move over just a smidge. I actually like that I've got the old olive with the mossy meadow actually one and an eighth and just about one and an eighth no biggie if it's not perfect but if making it even is important to you by all means wind it up on some grid paper or grab your ruler I've had this darn ruler in my stash forever probably time to get a new one and uh, I'll wait till I, I can't see it anymore. It's one and a quarter, and that's one and three eighths, so it needs to go over a little bit. One and three eighths, and a little too much. I like Goldilocks. Okay, there we go. We have two pieces glued together. Late to the party? Oh, Val, wait till you watch the beginning get through the first couple of minutes because I do play around with this paper a little bit and get the uh, layout right. Okay, we have two pieces stamped, layered, and little tabs on them so they're cute to pull out of our double pocket card. And we also have some scalloped circles. Actually, I did two just in case I goofed up and a white circle and that's going to go on the front for my greeting. So how I did the ribbon action was like this. Um, I took my take your pick tool which has a pointy end so there's a pointy end with a spatula on it so I'm using the pointy end and I poked a hole in the middle okay and when I did that I used this is the foam mat that comes with the take your pick tool but you know if you have um, any kind of a foamy thing um, a, an old catalog you can use an old mouse pad anything like that's going to work and then you just poke your hole through and tie some ribbon so I don't have any ribbon right here I'm just going to show you what I did and then I slip these guys in here and voila yeah there's still a little oh no there we go going in there we go and that's our double pocket piece how it works it kind of just stands up on its own there's no back to it there's nothing to say you can't put it on a card base it would be a standard um, eight and a half by five and a half inch piece or actually I'd probably make it tall and make it 11 by four and a quarter and then it would fit exactly on there it's a lot of paper I know but it makes the folds right and then I used the greeting from Wisteria Wishes, which I haven't used in forever, that says to a friend who's all kinds of wonderful. I have lots of friends who are all kinds of wonderful. And I like this font. The font is pretty. And we'll just make sure we got enough ink on there. There we go. A very similar tone to Mossy Meadow. I'm going to layer those on together. And I'm, before I sign off here, because I have, oh my gosh, it's 7.30 already. I don't have any extra time. I'm going to just show you that fold and cut paper thing all over again so that at the, by the end of the video, you're clear on what we're supposed to be doing. All right. So double pocket fold. Once again with the paper, you take a piece that's eight and a half by eleven, so your patterned paper that's eight and a half by eleven. Alright. 
you score it in the middle at four and a quarter and score it this way at five and a half. That's the halfway mark. You cut off a bit from the top left quadrant. Doesn't matter what you cut off, it's just to remove bulk. The bottom, on the right hand side, you're going to cut in on the two quadrants here. And that makes this little piece here, this little cut. So then you're going to take the bottom right quadrant and you're going to fold a corner up. It doesn't matter what angle it's on, what degree it's on, how high it is, that's up to you. You want to just make the angle, the line that comes here parallel with the score line and the line that comes across the top parallel with the cut line. You're going to fold this forward. Okay, and then you're going to take the top right quadrant and fold it back so that you have a piece that's long and skinny like this. And then you're going to, we cut this just bulk out. I could have cut further, but we cut this much. You're going to fold that whole left side over so that the t what's the top will now line up with the right. And you probably could glue it, but I glued all mine at the end. And then you're going to fold up on that score line from the bottom, flip it over, and you have a double pocket. And you're just going to add your adhesive from there. You're going to add, if you pull this piece down, you're going to add adhesive here and here. And you're going to add some here and at the bottom just to kind of keep it in check. All right, thanks for hanging with me. I hope you give this card a whirl. I think I should make a few more, and I will see you on Wednesday night. We're going to do a, what are we going to do? We are going to do um, another fun technique, so don't miss it. Come on back, 7 o'clock Wednesday. Bye for now.